Look at the person next to you. Say hi. You looked, and it's like, I say, say hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> that was really just cute. You had to see it from up here. You're adorable. Okay. We just want to welcome everybody this morning. Um, today's a beautiful day. Didn't yes. got up, didn't know it even rained. Slept that good. <laughs> but um, it's just a beautiful day, and you guys are all beautiful out there this morning. We have... You're beautiful up there, too. Oh, oh yes. 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 Handsome and beautiful. Handsome and beautiful. Yes. 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 Okay. Can't even see him. How do you know how handsome he is this morning? I see him already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Today is Chesling's High School Baccalaureate at the Trinity Methodist Church at 3 o'clock. And then the Chesling High School Honors Congress convocation at 7 p.m. at the middle school. Do you have anything going on at Owasso today? Nope. All over. All over. It's all over. Look at that ass. Look at her. <laughs> Jamie, congratulations. Thank you. And what you are going to be endeavoring to do, um, just do it with your whole heart. And just everything you got. Whatever you're going to do. You might change your mind tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy life. And while enjoy life while you're yeah. doing it. Yes, yes. Tuesday is Compassionate Ministries, 9 a.m. And the June desperate, uh, distributions will be six, uh, June 7th and 21st, the Ladies' Bible Study at 10 o'clock. And we're on... Uh, getting ready to go into the second series of The Chosen. However, we um, skipped one of the <laughs> we skipped one of the uh, episodes and we didn't realize it. And, and Wednesday night came for the episode and said um, we told Pastor we was on the last one Wednesday night and he, he says no. We're not on the last one, and we said, yes, we're on the last one, and he won. <laughs> so, anyway, we have one more to go uh, if we choose to see that. Otherwise, we're going to study Proverbs 31, which we never ended up on, on Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock, ladies. So, whatever your choice is Tuesday morning when we come in, we will do that. Uh, Wednesday is Bible study, and of course we're doing the chosen, and it has been a blessing. It has truly been a blessing. You're invited to come at 7 o'clock and watch with us. Any uh, birthdays today? Colleen and Jamie. <coughs> and your granddaughter turned two. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
take the Compassionate Ministries offering <coughs> right now. And Jamie and yes, you can tell me if you want to. <coughs> Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this time that we can uh, come and sit down and be quiet and just give our hearts to you. Now we just ask that you would just bless this Compassion Ministries offering to the nourishment of what it goes to, our compassion for people. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I think, now we're all coughing. I think, now we're all coughing. Charlene gave the pastor a look for his I think. 
think so too. She was out there. Yeah. I hope I was in tune. <laughs> As we see in our tithes and offerings this morning. Uh, <coughs> now everybody's coughing, yeah. <laughs> Walter? Heavenly Father, we come in privilege to give of our tithe, our offerings to Thee. And you have kind of commanded us to give hilariously with a good and loving and open heart. And so we pray, Lord, that you would use us for the furtherance of your kingdom and the work of our, our, our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless those who give and those who cannot. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 challenge and we're thankful for that and I I pray for the people of Baylor that went through the tornado I pray for all those people yes yes yes, yes. pray for Gaylor Diane. Diane I want to say prayers for all our soldiers that are being sent overseas mm -hmm. I also would like prayers for my family we've got a lot of things going on right now I'd like to thank the church for their prayers and their love. It's been very difficult. Um, we not only really lost a son, but we lost a daughter in law. And your love has been very comforting. And everything seemed to fall in place and work out good. Thank you, Pastor, for your prayers, too. <coughs> Our son-in-law's mom passed away last night, and so Michelle and David are going to have to figure out plans to, they're going to be heading for Kansas. So we ask prayer for the family and for Michelle and the boys to travel out there. It's it's really hard for David and then Daniel. He's 13 and you know he hasn't had to go through this too much. But they need lots of prayer. Jim, I'm not sure it's a praise or concern. Kind of sold her house. She closed Thursday, but she's going to be moving in with me. <laughs> <laughs> My two granddaughters are ill. Zion has missed two weeks of school. Uh, they were tested. The, the praise is they were tested for COVID and strep and flu, and it all came back negative. That's the good news. However, Violet 
has been very sick, and she has pneumonia. Oh. And uh, so we'd appreciate we'd appreciate your prayers. We appreciate your prayers. Oh, I have <coughs> Sorry, uh, I mentioned Phil Paul's having his toe amputated. Well, I mm. guess he did yesterday. And Connor ran so hard in the track or whatever it is he does that he's almost dislocated his hip from the other bone. So we need to pray for her at the home. Let us stand. <coughs>
daughters and sons. Oh, Father, how we appreciate it. Lord, as we come before you this morning, you've heard our praises. You've done wonderful things for us, and we're thankful. Father, you've also heard our request. Father, there are those who are sick and need a touch from you. Father, there are those who are terminally ill and need your grace. Father, then too, we ask in a special way that you would be with our nation, with our world. Lord, it's been another week, another week of mayhem. Father, it's been another week when Christians have been slaughtered. It's been another week when they've been driven from their homes. Father, be with our, our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ, please. Lord, you told us to pray for our enemies, and we pray for those who are persecuting us. And Father, we're asking that you would help those who are in direct uh, oh, uh, attack, that you would help the love of Christ to show, shine through that our enemies would be would see the love of God and that you would be able to reach into their hearts and Father that they would repent and that they would become our brothers our sisters and our friends Lord be with our nation be with our president with our governor, our legislators, our judges, and our civil servants. Father, they have so much power, and Lord, unfortunately, many of them are against you. They do not have a Christian worldview, and we're asking in a special way that you would come to them and change them. Be with our local leaders. We're thankful for those who serve, we simply ask that they would uh, be drawn, uh, that they would be among the best and the wisest among us. Father, be with our congregation. Lord, you know that we're in the process of preparing to send me on a sabbatical. Father, you know that this is to be a time uh, of rest and spending time with you. Lord, please be with us as a congregation. And may this sabbatical be as good for the congregation as it is for me. Father, may we come back better equipped to win the good fight of faith and to, and to further execute our mission here in, the, uh, in this area. Lord, be with the remainder of our service. Everything that's sung, everything that's done, may it be to your name's honor and glory. For we've asked it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Proverbs uh, 25, 1-3 says, These are more Proverbs of Solomon, copied by the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of God. As the heavens are high and the earth is deep, so the hearts of kings are unsearchable. That is the Proverbs for today. Just for kids. Yeah, just for kids are coming up. Hello, beautiful. Did you get some new glasses? Yeah. You look cute in them. Okay. You really do. You know, 
one of the things that we want to do in this world is we want to shine the light of love everywhere we go. And I think that what I, we'd like to see this morning is this is the light of love. You got your light? <laughs>
Daniel comes running home and Dad says, well, how'd the fight go? <laughs> he said, you know, Dad, it worked. I was kind to him. He told him what he did. And he said, he's been nice to me ever since. The scripture teaches us, do not repay evil for evil, but repay evil with good. Amen. Now remember, God loves you. Jesus loves you. The church loves you. And so do I. God bless you. You dismissed the children's church.
uh, usually four to six in advance and whatever the Lord works with those things. But since Easter, the Lord's been giving them to me one week at a time. And uh, it's turned out to be a study in love. And I will tell you that I don't know what you've gotten out of it, but it's been very profitable for me personally. And I can, I can tell you this, the person who does the preaching probably gets more out of it than the people who listen to it uh, in terms of growth and whatever. But today, <coughs> we've been, as we've been reflecting on what Jesus has said, had to say about love, um, today we, we get into one of the hard sayings of Jesus, and this is, love your enemies. Um, and so, let me begin by pointing out that there is a difference between an adversary and an enemy. An adversary is simply someone who opposes you. Now, the most common thing would be like an opponent in sports or the people you're playing against in a board game or maybe someone you're having a debate with. But whatever it is, they mean no harm. It's simply... Uh, differences in ideas and whatever. On the other hand, an enemy intends to hurt you. This is an intentional thing. We're not talking about, you know, just competing or competing ideas. We're talking here about someone who intends to hurt you. They'll work on your reputation, your influence, your wealth, your income, even your life. They will attack these things and try and destroy them. So when we start talking about loving your enemies, we know uh, that we're talking about more than just, you know, usual things in life. Now, there are two passages uh, where Jesus teaches us to love our enemies. Uh, the first one uh, is Luke 26, uh, 27 through 36. The second one is... Matthew 5, 43 and 48. Uh, for those of you who are, uh, know your Bible as well, you'll notice that the one in Matthew comes from the, uh, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, and the one in Luke, which, is all, which almost reiterates that, is called the Sermon on the Plain. So they're, they are, they are, they're, uh, that's where they're coming from. Let's read them. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those that hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Uh, give to everyone who asks you, and if you, anyone strikes you uh, uh, or takes what belongs to you, uh, do not demand it back. Do to others what you would have others do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is it to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit's that to you? Even sinners do that. <coughs> and if you lend to those from whom uh, you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners expect to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, lend without expecting anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful. Um, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. And then the uh, Matthew passage. You have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. He causes the, uh, his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore as your heavenly Father is perfect. Uh, in Luke, 
<coughs> Jesus starts with a list of people who intend to hurt us and how we should respond. Now, I got to looking at this, and it seemed to me that this was classic Jewish poetry to help us remember. And so I uh, reworked it a little bit and see if we can do that. Um, for instance, he says, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Now notice the progression here. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. <coughs> Hate, curse, and mistreat are behaviors of enemies, right? Don't they do that? But our first response to any of that needs to, uh, response is to love them. Now, remember this whole thread that we've been looking at all of this time is that agape love is based upon the value of the object and not necessarily the benefit the object may give us. Um, we choose to love people because they are God's creation. Okay? Their life is valuable. You see, John 3.16 uh, has become so familiar to us when we read God so loved. He gave. And so what we have is that there, if God, they're made by God, and God's creation, their life is valuable. And so when we choose to love them, we choose to have their best interest at heart. Okay? That's, that's, a, that's a, uh, just a blanket thing. We choose to treat them with respect. But they disrespect me. Well, let me see, we said a little earlier, don't repay evil with evil, but repay evil with good. Right? Choose to choose. Now here's the paradox to this, and these are in one sense a little comical, but we love people we don't like. <laughs> and if you, if you, you know, now you can treat them with respect, but I mean, I got some people I just don't like. Oh, you're a pastor. You're supposed to like everybody. I'm also human. And while I love everybody, I don't like everybody. <laughs> right? What? What? Uh, we love people we do not care to associate with. Okay? Come, come on. Now, I can tell you something. <clears throat> when people have been involved in a life of sin. One of the things that they have to do in order to uh, gain victory and begin to live the righteous life they've been called to do is they have to disassociate with the old crowd. You know, if you've been a drinker, then you can't go to the bar anymore. Now, you may have friends that you like and whatever, but you've got to come up with some new and different friends, okay? We love people we don't care to be friends with, okay? We just don't have any common interests. That's, that's where we are. So, we love our enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Now, when we start talking about doing good to those that hate us, people that hate us do not do good. Okay? They, they don't have anything good for us. But those who hate us, we do good to them. We do what we can to help them uh, to, to bring things in their life. We, Eric, next please. We bless those who curse us. Now, we, we don't use those terms a lot in our language. But we have a, but what, when someone curses us, 
Um, they are trying to call down evil on our head. I want you to, the, the word cuss that we have is actually kind of an Appalachian Old English way of saying curse. I want you to think about curses. When someone says, go to hell, they're cursing you, right? Isn't that when they say, God damn you, think what they're saying. And so when, we, when those who curse us, what do we do? Do we call them back? No. What we do is, is we bless them. May you have a wonderful day. May your life prosper. We just don't do those things. We bless those that curse us. We pray for those who mistreat us. Um, one of the most difficult things that we have is when someone hurts us is to pray for them. <laughs> Come on. One thing that has helped me in this area has been to realize that hurting people hurt people. Hurting people hurt people. And so when that happens, we pray for those who mistreat us. Let's kind of close this section here by reminding ourselves if your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Now, Jesus is simply expanding on what the proverb writer said. The other thing we're supposed to do is return good for evil. For example, if someone strikes you on one cheek, Turn to him the other. Every time I read that, I think of the Reverend Mr. Black. You know, do you remember that song? He rode easy in the saddle, kind of tall and lean, and people thought nothing but a streak of pure meaning could make a man look so downright strong. But one look at his eyes and you know he was wrong. If ever I thought this man in black was weak and had any uh, yellow in his back, I gave that notion up the day. A lumberjack walked in, wasn't afraid. Yeah, he kicked open the meeting house door and he cussed everybody up and down the floor. And then <clears throat> when things got quiet in the place, he walked up and cussed the preacher's face. He hit that preacher with the kick of a mule and to my way of thinking, it took a pure fool to turn the other cheek to that lumberjack. But that's what he did, the Reverend Mr. Black. And then he said, with a voice quiet, he said, you got to walk that lonesome valley. you got to walk it by yourself. Oh, nobody else can walk it for you. you got to walk it by yourself. It's real. <clears throat> if someone strikes you, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop from him taking your tunic. Um, a coat, it, their, their cloak was an outer garment, the tunic was a, like a shirt. If he takes it, if he takes one, well, say, you know, don't stop him from doing more. Um, this has been one of the more difficult ones for me because so many people <laughs> feel entitled. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Well, um, part of the problem I have is we're living, we're living in a time where we have a subculture that feels they're entitled to what we have. Now, saying nothing of the uh, state and, and uh, national governments. <laughs> But, but the idea is, if you love someone, you're going to do what's best for them. And sometimes what's best is to say no. But the general rule is, 
somebody asks you to give it to them. Uh, if anyone <clears throat> takes what you belong to you, don't demand it back. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. What's that? Real loud, tell me, what is it? Golden rule. Golden rule. Do unto others what you would have others do unto you. Now here's the genius of Jesus. The older rabbis had it in the negative. Don't do anything that you wouldn't want to have done to you. Don't do it, okay? But Jesus takes it out of the passive realm and puts it into the active realm and says, do to them what you would have others do to you. Changes the whole force of the thing. If you love them, you've got their best interest in their heart, and you are going to actively do for others what you would like to have done for yourself. Okay? And then he summarizes in the last two verses. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend without expecting to get back. And then your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful as your Father is merciful. This actually leads into the Matthew passage where Matthew talks about being sons and daughters of our, of our Father. He starts off by saying, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Again, um, this is where we are. This is why we, we pray every Sunday for our persecuted brothers and sisters and for our persecutors. You see, as, as, as the children of God, Jesus taught us that if one of us suffers, all of us suffers. And if our brothers and sisters in Nigeria are being persecuted, we are being persecuted. And so we want to pray for our persecutors, and that's why we do that. Um, uh, but pray for those who persecute. Why? Why, Jesus? Why do you want us to do that? That you may be the sons of your fathers in heaven. Okay? And then he says this. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. Now, I want you to think about that. We're living in a pretty wicked America, aren't we? Yeah. Has the sun quit shining? Yeah. No. Oh, you mean, <clears throat> and it, it shines on you, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. But uh, does it shine on your wicked neighbor? The trouble it shines on Putin. <laughs> 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 <It stinks. laughs> yeah. Okay, now I want you to think about God in this. He lets the sun shine on the evil. I think of some of the heinous crimes that are being the shooter in Buffalo that shot and killed 10 people just because of the color of their skin. Mm -hmm. How wicked can we be? Yeah. Those are God's creation. Yeah. Those are our brothers and sisters. Yeah. You say, well, but they're a different skin color. So what? We got red blood in our veins. We're created by God. We're all his children. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't look a thing like Ellen. That's right. It's wicked. Now I want to weep. I want to weep. And I took. I, I thought last Sunday how <clears throat> that the shooter went into a church and killed one person there and injured, I think, ten others or something like that. That's evil. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's anybody that needs to have the light turned out, it's those kind of people, right? Amen. Amen. 
Come on. Right. Yeah. But God doesn't do it. Why not? He's a merciful God. Now I can tell you, God's angry. <laughs> Make no mistake. And they will be dealt with. But we need to understand that God is merciful to the evil as well as the good. There aren't special privileges here on this kind of stuff. He says the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. I, I think about this. Uh, John, you're in the farming business, and, and uh, I, I think, don't you grow some grain around there? Have you got some farmers around you that are uh, uh, evil? I imagine there are some. I don't know of any. Rain. Okay. Okay. But they get the rain when you guys get the rain, right? Again, um, God is very, very, and he sums that up. Uh, love your enemies. Pray for your persecutors because God causes the sun to rise on evil and good. And he sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. God returns good for evil. God returns good for evil. And if we're going to be sons and daughters of God, we return good for evil. Now, in both Matthew and Luke, Jesus asks a rhetorical question. He says, if you do good to those who do good to you, what reward is there in that? And he, he does different things. But the idea is, if you just treat people good that treat you good, how are they different than anybody else? But if we're going to be sons of God, daughters of God, we're going to love our enemies and we are going to do for them. We are going to do for them like our Father does. Do good even though we receive evil. Let's summarize. To love your enemies is to return good for evil. To do what's best, what is in their best interest, we love them. Uh, do good to them. Pray for them. And be merciful to them. Isn't that what Jesus said on all that? Now that's a tall order, isn't it? Everything within us rebels almost against that. It does. But it's a choice that we make. Remember, your adversary is not necessarily your enemy. And remember, do unto others what you have others do unto you. Amen. 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 Again, this is one of the more difficult hard sayings of Jesus. But if you stop and think about it, if our world would live by the golden rule. Yeah. <laughs> It'd change our whole world. Oh, yeah. yeah. It'd change our whole world. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, uh, we've heard your words. And Father, they've challenged us. And we, uh, we, Father, we will, not, we will not deny that it's hard. But you filled us with your spirit so that we could do what you called us to do. Father, we're asking that as we love our enemies, pray for them and do good for them that they would see you 
And Father, that they would be convicted of their sin and come to you and accept Jesus as their Savior. And Father, stop being our enemies and become our brothers and sisters in Christ. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Father, uh, she's made wise decisions. She's honored her parents. And she's uh, uh, worked in the school. And she's developed her talents. Mm -hmm. Father, as she has made this accomplishments, we as a church want to bless her. Father, we're asking that you would bless her future. Guide her. Lord, we know. There are three decisions that she makes that's going to uh, affect her life. First of all, who she's going to marry. My God, my God, there are so many failed marriages and so many selfish people out there. My God, we pray that you would protect Jamie and that you would bring her a spouse that is as good for her as she is for him. Father, the second thing, decision that helps her is what is she going to do? Yeah. Lord, at this point, her plans are to go into oh, uh, agribusiness. And Father, we need that. We need wise and good people uh, in the agricultural industry. Father, we ask that you would, that you would uh, send your Holy Spirit to her. Yeah. And Father, that she would be filled with wisdom and knowledge and insight and skill and father may she serve you well in the choice that she has but father guide her and direct her father though we do ask that you would be with her that while right now you've guided her in this direction if sometime in the future you want to change direction will you help her and let her know 
that she that she's following you above all let her follow you and then finally Lord the decision on where she's going to live Lord where she lives is going to have a lot to do with her happiness and so we ask that you would guide her in her life that you would bring her to those communities and that you would help her in a special way to settle and build a home in a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. Father, we bless Jamie with these prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.